don't even know how you start these. <laughs> so, even though I've watched like a thousand of them. So, try and not make myself feel awkward. <laughs> I never thought I would be doing anything like this. Um, so yeah, so welcome to my knitting podcast, vlogcast. <laughs> my name is McKenna from Intuitive Knits on Instagram if you want to go follow me or say hi. Um, I'm originally from Michigan, so it's in the United States, but I live in Germany. So I live in a little bit south of Berlin. Um, if you're fancy Deutsch sind, then um, ich wohne in Leipzig. <laughs> genau. Um, und ich kann auch Deutsch, falls Sie Fragen haben. I just, um, if you're German, then hey. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, I've been knitting. I have like learned how to knit kind of like a, a lot of people did during the pandemic. I feel like just blew up on the internet. Um, I've been crocheting since I was 12. Or I learned how to crochet, we'll say, when I was 12. On my way and on like a family road trip. Doesn't matter, my mom crochets. Um, my grandma, one of my grandmas used to knit, one of my grandma crocheted. So just kind of melted together. Um, and when I learned how to crochet, I did a lot of granny square blankets, which will come back in this episode, um, because I actually have a crochet project, which I don't normally have, uh, because I prefer to knit, uh, because I enjoy making garments, and I just like the way knitted garments look. So, but I do enjoy a granny square, so yeah, we'll see some of those later. Any hizzle, I learned how to knit during the pandemic, so end of 2020, and I've been knitting ever since. So, um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so <laughs> I'm so excited to share my knitting with some someone. I don't I don't know if anyone's gonna see this, but potentially the idea of sharing my knitting with people is so cool. I have one friend, one that knits in the city where I live right now um, and then everyone else that I know that knits is online um, that's not true technically my boyfriend's mom taught me how to knit uh, she so she can knit technically but she doesn't knit like ever like it's just kind of something she knows how to do but just doesn't really do it very often so oh and my and my boyfriend's sister can also knit with that, let's get started. I'm gonna do the normal format, I think, at first, just because I just wanna, I tend to like this and then that thing. Um, so I need I need like guidelines or else I just talk for ages and like ramble, because it's already nine minutes. <laughs> like, I don't know, like not edited, it's nine minutes. So, uh, <clears throat> gotta rein that in. Um, all right. So I'll we'll have finished objects, which since this is like my first podcast, podcast, I hate that. Can we call it like a vodcast? I don't know. That's a thing. I'm going to call it a vodcast because it's just, pod, I'm a millennial. Podcast is something you listen to. Sorry, Gen Z, but it's true. <laughs> like if I can see you, it's not a podcast to me, but whatever. It's a vodcast. In this vodcast, we will have finished objects first. And then we'll go on to whips, works in progress. And then we will do acquisitions, which I, I love. I love just like looking at people's acquisitions, like when they're like so excited to like get that yarn and <laughs> or like stitch markers or project bags. And this makes me so happy to like see their joy when they like want to show something that they've recently acquired. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to kind of not buy <laughs> as much yarn and stuff like I don't ever want to be no judgment on anyone if this is you that's totally fine just I never want to be someone who has more yarn than they can knit in a lifetime for one in a lifetime just in general but like I don't want to acquire let's say three years. If I have three years worth of yarn just sitting there waiting to be knit, 
I don't want to acquire anymore unless it's like this skein is oh, then I maybe you know <laughs> but like I'm not gonna deny myself the joy of purchasing someone and also supporting like small um, hand dyers especially but I don't I don't know like I, I, I love going into my stash and I have a small stash like because I haven't been knitting for that long. I have a pretty small stash in comparison to other people um, that I'm okay with right now. <laughs> it's just I don't want it to grow exponentially um, over the course of 2024 when I'm filming. So, yeah. So instead, if I do not acquire anything in that time period between like... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that time period from this podcast and vodcast. It's gonna be a thing. Vodcast and the next. Then I'll just do like stash, like showing something fun in my stash. It might not even be fun for you, but just like I feel like it'll be in <laughs> inspiring for myself to like hold something that I already own and like imagine or talk about what I had planned to make with it and why I'm not making that anymore or like something that I want to make with that eventually so yeah there we go <clears throat> that way there's always like an acquisitions part because I'm always bummed when they're like I didn't get anything no I'm like damn it like <laughs> I can't like vicariously live through your purchase how dare you like <laughs> how dare you not over consume <laughs> but yeah so um this podcast oh gosh that's gonna bug me I keep saying podcast I know I've heard it a million and two times because I do listen I mean obviously I watch other other knitting podcast 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 so I think the botanical knitter says vlog cast which she knows what's up there's also a midwestern vape so we have that same vibe okay um i have never had a podcast before so i didn't know which like finished object i should show you but i just thought like this is the beginning this is uh we're in march of maybe february march yes oh my god <laughs> march of 2024 right now um so i'm gonna show you everything i've kind of knit in 2024 so far and then my advent fest from last year because I just want to talk about it because I just thought I just if anyone wants to use that I the idea I'm sure someone else has thought of this before but do it it's fun so but we'll get there okay no maybe I'll do it now then no I have to talk about what I'm wearing just kidding um so this little number was a self, semi self drafted Frankenstein situation. I can't like take, I just can't take it off. It's so comfortable. I love it so much. I was also influenced by the Barbie movie, as many were. And this color, I know you've probably seen a million times in the last year. And I never thought of myself as a pink person. Um, but I just love it. I love it so much. I saw the yarn. It's drops. Both of them are drops. And I know a lot of people have thoughts about drops, but when I first started knitting, I, I found drops or a very good friend of mine <laughs> showed me drops and I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't feel like, oh, if I, you know, don't do this well, like, or if this doesn't turn out or whatever that I'm spending like 20 euros a skein, you know? euros <laughs> it's probably funny for like my fellow americans um but yeah any who's all that is drops nepal and drops alpaca silk in the shade i'm not sure what language i'm sure probably danish would be my guess but the colors technically it's like the danish word i'm sure it's danish for him out for or raspberry so it's in their raspberry color it starts with c but you can find it i don't want to go look 
and or like a fuchsia you'll find it if you want it so uh, I basically took my favorite pattern ever um it was my first like sweater which was like my second object <laughs> um the Weasley sweater by oh my gosh what's her name we just moved so all the books are like packed up Tannis I think it's Tannis Gray I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that or like the first name is wrong I know the last name is Gray though and she made like a, a, a bunch of patterns for like a wizarding Harry Potter book and I got that for Christmas one year and um yeah because I've always wanted to knit the Weasley sweater pullover and um it was in there and I knit it the first one I knit for my boyfriend second one I knit for myself third one I think I've made four of them by now and I just love it my favorite this is going to be controversial I my favorite construction is a satin satin sleeve and I don't mind maybe I, I need another I think I'm gonna do a, an episode just about like my kind of semi-controversial like unpopular opinions I love I don't mind a bottom up sweater if I'm doing it for myself if I'm making it for someone else I'm kind of like I don't know how long they'll want it and also if you're playing yarn chicken that sucks so um <laughs> I only enjoy bottom up if I know I have enough yarn um I think that's everyone's opinion on that it's probably why everyone doesn't like you know not everyone but a lot of people don't like bottom up anyways this normally you do the front panel ignore this part you would do the front panel and then the back panel flat I also love I love knitting flat I think it's interesting so um and then you knit the sleeves flat and then you sew them or I crochet them all together the seams and I do like a three I did it inside out this time but like a three needle bind off I don't know if there's a better name for that probably is but what I don't like is I don't like knitting the sleeves flat. So knitting sleeves flat is kind of frustrating because you have to make sure that the sleeve like top fits like in the hole. And, and you know, that's a tough one um, with those increases sometimes. And I hate like having to go back and like measure and make sure and stuff. So what I do is now I just, I did the, basically for this construction, I did the front panel or maybe the back panel first. You guy, doesn't matter. Um, I crocheted those together, right? So that I had like a flat, like a vest. And then I picked up for the sleeves because I like this, like the detail of, I don't know if there's a little hole. Ignore that, please. I've worn this so much. It's probably, I could sew that closed. It's whatever. Um, but I like that it has like this extra square. Like I don't like drop shoulder things because I'm already very broad shouldered. I'm very square shouldered and I'm very small. So I mean, you can't tell <laughs> here, but I'm very, I'm very thin. So if I have like a drop, drop shoulder and the shoulder is going down here, and then the garment's also like here, it's just much too wide. And then with my shoulders, it, it just makes, it's just not me. I have one drop shoulder that I'll, I'll show you that is a finished object and it's probably the only drop shoulder I'll ever make. It looks great, I love it, it's fine, it's comfy, it's awesome, but it's just not my, it's just not my vibe. So, also super unpopular opinion. I'm not a big drop shoulder person. A lot of people are. That's cool. We don't all have to be the same. <laughs> um, that would be so boring, wouldn't it? Okay, um, back to the sweater. Picked up stitches for the arm. Obviously I missed one or I don't know what happened there, but I have a little hole. That's what it is. <laughs> and then I like didn't decrease. I think I maybe did like three decreases, not even. I decreased, oh, you can see one, two, maybe three, four. And then I kind of did like a little rapid decrease at the cuff and then like, yeah, just kind of went, I just went with it and I love it. Oh, it's my favorite. I think it might be my favorite sweater I've made. I don't know if I can say that. At one point I'll do like a, my favorite sweaters. My gosh, it's 20 minutes long. How do you guys do this? 
Like if you're a, a vodcaster, how do you, I, do you just edit a lot out? Or do I just talk a lot? It is what it is. If it's gonna be an hour and a half, it's gonna be an hour and a half. If you wanna sit here and listen to me talk for an hour and a half and knit your little knit and have your little drink and have a good time, do it. I'm just gonna do that. I'm like, never gone surfing in my life. Okay. <laughs> I don't think boogie boarding counts, but whatever. All right, so, and then this part, I just stole from a free pattern on, I think, Hobby's website, Hobby Yarns, if you don't know them. They have a lot of beautiful free patterns, and I didn't like the way they had, like, a seed stitch here. I went with, like, a, I wanted to be garter, or just, like, at least pearl, <laughs> not garter, but I wanted to be, like, enough contrast that it wasn't knit but I didn't want to seed stitch it just didn't seem right to me and I didn't want to do a rib I thought that would kind of look weird too so I went with just like knitting on the, just like stock net but having the pearl side the flap to give it a little bit of interest but not that people are like <laughs> so yeah but I just kind of I worked the um Weasley Weasley sweater up to here <laughs> kind of like rigged this opening from the other one and just put that on there I just, I just I, I can't like I didn't write anything down <laughs> so I don't think I could probably duplicate it on my own but yeah please don't ask me for any pattern advice I'm not a knitwear designer I'm just just winging it <laughs> aren't we all okay next finished object wait so I already told you about the the yarns in this one I don't have the details I also like do you want the details on the yarn at first someone's like that's this and this held together and then like give me the yarn like lengths and stuff I'm gonna tell you right now I think it's like a worsted weight for Nepal it's probably worsted weight and um oh, let's see 70 75 75 meters per 50 gram skein I'll do it for you people that will probably maybe never see this I'll do it for you I oh I found this book it's my little knitting book um oh I'm spot on there we go See right there. There it is. Okay, so drops alpaca uh drops Nepal is 75 meters for 50 gram skein. The brushed alpaca, honestly, I don't know. I didn't write it down apparently. <laughs> Why didn't I write that down? It's not really that important, is it? I would go and find a skein of it, but it's like all the way over there um and I don't know yet how to like put stuff on the screen or if I'm going to be able to do that so I'll figure that out so we're just going to go with it was enough um and if you really want to find it you can find it on the website um so yeah I'm sure you're like I've knit with that before so it doesn't matter okay next object and this was a size me because I just kind of winged it do we want to see the vest? My Advents vest? I think so. Should I take this off? I'm just going to take it off on camera. I don't care. I'm wearing it. Getting really hot. It's March, but like it's warm out today. So that's, I'm sorry. I have a little bit of pets because I just wanted to show you my pink sweater. Okay. But it's hot. And now we have a vest. Okay. So. It is warm. This is my Advent Fest. <laughs> it's, both, it's different on both sides, on each side. It is what it is, okay? And then the other side looks different, okay? <clears throat> do this, do this. I, it was so much fun. I've never done like a skein Advent before, but, I'm sure that this is just as 
just as fun. So what I did was, this is Drops Nepal. I don't know why <laughs> both of those were Nepal, but um, <laughs> both of them were Drops. I have some non-Drops yarn as well. <laughs> but this was Drops Nepal, 75 meters per 50 gram skein. I used, I think, four skeins. I used four skeins <laughs> and I had some left over, I think even, and this is quite roomy. I took a vest pattern. I think I used, I want to say I used the, my favorite things, knitwear, sweater, vest, number one as a reference. <laughs> um, and I just kind of took her measurements kind of the the general like cast on stuff and kind of just generally how she how she um put the garment together and then just did my own thing so this should if it was hers this should all be plain stuck in it but it's not <laughs> and it's definitely roomier than hers because uh she calls for like a dk and this is, i mean i nepal's probably like a worsted would be my guess um Oh, it's so cute. I love it so much. And this beautiful periwinkle color. Um, if you want the colors or the names or like whichever, um, yeah, like colors I used or something like that, just like drop it in the comments and I'll write you back. <laughs> but like right now, I, because I knit these so long ago and I wasn't preparing myself to put this on the internet, um, I don't have that information anymore. <laughs> I just wrote like periwinkle in my notes. So maybe I have the dye lot. I think sometimes I put the dye lot because I'm like scared if I, no, I just literally wrote color periwinkle. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No dye lot, just winging it. So that's that. <clears throat> the idea was instead of buying myself a beautiful ad curated advent that someone else put together, which I will do at some point in my life. Um, but last year, no. I decided to use up stash yarn. And I knew I had a vest's worth, maybe even a sweater's worth, a quantity of this beautiful periwinkle color drops Nepal. And so I decided that I would just like take the amount of yarn I would need for the body without the rib, without any of the ribs, even like the cast on rib um and then I would just pull a bunch of it out and make little different sized skeins so some of them were more some of them were less I didn't like weigh them out I just kind of like okay that's good and until I had 24 and um and those three skeins I think I used three skeins at first three skeins were gone um, then I wrote down on a bunch of slips of paper, the different like patterns. So I wrote like, and I drew them out <laughs> like with little, uh, pearls and knits, <laughs> stitches, like each pattern. So I wrote down on a slip of paper for this one. This was probably like, um, stripes, you know, like, uh, pearl one knit to pearl one, something like that. And then this was this stripe for example was just pearls like I just had a, on the slip of paper was pearls and from here to here that's how long the yarn lasted so that day I had a lot of pearls <laughs> here is seed stitch a little like zigzag number I have some waffle going on I think some of there's maybe even broken rib I don't know but just a bunch of different stuff and just like had fun with it put them all on slips of paper cut all the slips of paper up and then whew, mixed them all together in a hat and then I took my little advent which I have like little houses I put each skein just random in different houses and then I picked random pieces of paper and put those in there with the skein and then uh come December I would just like pick one of the houses they're like little bags they look like houses um, I studied like historic preservation was my passion in college. So, um, they're like little old school, like Christmas houses, cute. <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, I just like would take that bag and then whatever pattern, <laughs> having a German moment, <laughs> whatever pattern was in that bag and like whatever amount of yarn was in that bag is what I did that day. So yeah, it was fun. I think the first day, I, if I would make any suggestions, I would say like the first day I, her pattern starts like up here at the neck. Um, if I remember right, like you cast on the back. Yeah, I think it's the back. You cast on the back. I would make any suggestions. I would just say like your first one has to be a knit maybe. So like save one of the knit ones and then put all of them in a box like the first day is not going to be exciting as far as the pattern goes but like at least the the amount of yarn might be interesting but i ended up having to switch the first one and the second one um and i also put in three you decide like you choose <laughs> so that if i was at a section where there was like nothing or whatever then i would be like oh because i was trying to end certain between certain sections with just like a little bit of stockinette to like break it up um and like the next section was like a you choose I would obviously I would choose something that I thought like oh this would look sick you know um yeah oh but you have to do it it's so much fun you don't have to but I I really 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 encourage you to do it I'm doing the second one this year it's my second year doing it I'm making my boyfriend a an advent vest so an ad vest <laughs> um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be dope but and this year he doesn't know this so his favorite flower is rhododendron it's like these huge we have like these huge bushes um in the park where we live like near where we live and he just loves those flowers and there's a local uh or a German yarn dyer, she uses, sometimes she uses plant dyes, and it was dyed with rhododendron, and he doesn't know that yet. Um, it hasn't arrived, I recently ordered it, because I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is it. So I'm so excited to like knit with that. The colors, I'll, I'm sure I'll show it when, in the next episode for when it arrives, but it's, from the pictures, it's kind of like a, like a beigey green, like a, a breen uh yeah or like maybe like a khaki I don't know I don't care what color it is honestly I'm just so excited to knit with a rhododendron dyed yarn and he's gonna be so excited he knows he's getting the advent fest this year um I like to knit for him <laughs> it's fun but uh yeah I don't always knit for him <laughs> I'm trying to knit more for me this year last year I'd knit a lot for other people and as much as I find other people, a lot of people are knit worthy, I, it just, it takes so long to knit something and then like giving it away. It's fun, but at the same time, you're like, goodbye, my lover, you know, or like, I'm just like, you know, <laughs> see ya, maybe at some point in my life when you decide to wear it and we happen to see each other. But other than that, it's like, okay, farewell. Okay. Advent's best. So great, okay. So now you can tell, see? Okay, so I have broad shoulders. I mean, for, for like a woman, I guess. <laughs> very square, broad shoulders, okay? And I'm very thin. Um, and I, I'm a loose knitter. I'm just, I'm loosey-goosey with it. I, I've never, like even at the very beginning when I first learned how to knit, everything was just like loose and even. <laughs> I got really lucky. I think it was because of the crochet and I just make a lot of crafts. So I've never had that like, oh, this needs to be like super tight so it stays together or I don't know. I just always kind of like da 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 <laughs> done my thing. But a lot of people are like way tighter engaged than I am. So I, being a thin person, like a very... I don't, I don't like saying small because I'm really tall because I can't say petite because I'm not petite. I'm like, like a stick. Like I like spindly, like a, like spider, spider-esque. And 
or they have very voluptuous bodies. I don't know why I think it's like the arms, like a daddy long leg, well, that, okay? And if you're a loose knitter and you're thin and you have like little twig extremities, everything's huge. Like anything from petite knit, massive. I don't, like she has a lot of positive ease written into her patterns and I'm like, dang, like I've learned, I don't think I'm gonna be knitting a lot of petite knit patterns anymore because one, like I really want to use like designers that aren't like super, super crazy well-known. I mean like people like Rebecca Klo or someone from Crayabea or something like that's fine because she's like well-known, but like, I feel like petite knit, if you look up anything in knitting, she's like the first person you find, first person I found, right? So. Um, and she has beautiful timeless designs not to say that I don't love her designs It's just they are not made for someone Like me, which is weird because she's also very small So I don't know what it is, but I'm just way looser than her in knitting. Okay That being said this is my Stockholm sweater by petite knit It's this really really cute. Oh This is more true to color when it's back here. It's like yellow but I want to show the speckles. Look at those little specks. How freaking cute. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. Drop shoulder, not for me. I just, this is my first drop shoulder thing I've ever made. And now I've learned if I'm going to make another one, I need to make the armhole much longer. <laughs> it looks like a little noodle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Compose myself. Look at that. What is that? It looks fine on, I'll show you, but it's just like, dude, what is this? Like, it's like a giant square and then these little noodles that come off the ends. I modify like everything I make, so this isn't technically <laughs> exactly like her design. I think the original Stockholm sweater has, the original Stockholm sweater has a folded, a folded uh, collar. And, um, I think the sleeves have a longer rib, but I'm not a fan of like really long ribbing. And I usually like things like on my wrists because my arms are also quite long. I don't mind if they're short like this because I end up pulling everything up, as you can tell, to like here anyways. Or they need to be like tight on my wrist. Like I don't like, I think just because I've never really experienced sweaters that like go like this, this bothers my, this bothers me. It has to be like up here. Sorry, I just had to pause because I needed to blow my nose. I'm getting over a, a cold. I can actually talk now, which is so great. But that's why I consumed so many vodcasts um, that now I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to make my own. Like I need to, I need to give back to whoever, whoever cares, but Back to the Stockholm sweater, Stockholm sweater. Usually there's a folded like neck band um, and the, the arms are like longer and they have like a longer rib. My, as you can see, like there's my arm, right? Like that is my arm. Like it's not down here. And usually like a, what I've noticed with other people's drop shoulders, the arm is obviously a little longer, but like regardless, I just feel like it makes, I know it's actually, it's fine. It's just like, this is really wide. It like makes it really wide. And when I'm already really square here and very small here, it just kind of like, why am I knitting all of this extra fabric? Why am I doing this to myself? So <clears throat> I like it. Yarn's great. The yarn is a fun little, Kawinky Dink. I found this in one of like the big box knitting stores, um, knitting stores, craft stores here in Germany. It's called like the creative idea if I was to translate it. Um, but like, is it the creative idea or maybe just creative idea? Doesn't matter. I keep saying that. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, but it really doesn't. Um, but I really enjoyed this. It's from Rico Design. 
It's a Creative Cotton Flecky Fleece. Say that five times fast, Creative Cotton Flecky Fleece. <laughs> it's a DK um, and it's 100 grams for, or 250 meters to 100 grams, okay? It's a 75% cotton, 13% acrylic, 12% wool. I'm not an acrylic fan. You love acrylic, you do you. Make everything in acrylic. If you love acrylic, cool. Um, I'm not saying don't buy anything with acrylic in it, but it's just not, not for me. Um, not in like clothes I've thrifted and not in my knitwear. This is like the only one that I think I have in my entire sash that has any sort of percent acrylic and I'm just tolerating it because I loved the, like how fun this was <laughs> to knit. I originally got this, um, I originally got this yarn to make a crochet garment that, and like crochet is super airy, right? It has a lot of holes. Um, so I thought like, okay, it's like 13% acrylic. I think I can, think I can do that. <laughs> um, so I bought it a lot. <laughs> well, it's going to say multiple swear words. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to like not, not do a lot of like swears. Not that I mind, but just in case your family's around, I guess, and you don't want to listen to cuss words. Um, I bought a lot of this yarn because crochet uses more yarn than knitting. And I was going to make this cool like cardigan that I still plan on doing eventually, but just not in this. I didn't like the way it worked up as much in the crochet as I did in knit. This is the only garment I have ever gauge swatched fully for. Like, I gauge swatched it because I knew petite knits <laughs> patterns. I always like have to go down a needle size, which makes it extremely small, like needle size. Or like, I don't know, I have to like weasel the pattern somehow, <laughs> like take a couple stitches off. Um, this one, I was spot on on gauge and it's still huge. I don't know what happened there, but I like did an actual gauge. I kept it. I snipped it off. I blocked, like I kept the gauge swatches proof because usually when I gauge swatch, I'll like use the skein and then I'll unravel it. So I can use that yarn. Like I don't want to keep gauge swatches um, for some reason, I just know. But I just love the way it looked so much and I actually blocked it and like to double check and everything. And I wanted like proof <laughs> that I had actually gauge swatched something. Most things I just don't. Cause I'm just like, eh, it's probably gonna be oversized anyways. <laughs> If I was going to make something like super tight fitted, I'd probably look, but I'm just, I'm not a tight fitted person, um, like other than a cotton t-shirt or something, but I don't wear like tight garments by themselves usually. So yeah, Ugh. anyways, this is, this is that. I don't know what else to say about it. I, the pattern was fine to follow, easy peasy. I considered like taking off the arms and just like, it looked really cool. My boyfriend was also like, that looks sick. Um, and I was like, yeah, but I have so much yarn. I just want to see what it looks like with the arm. But the arms are really small, but I, it's really comfortable. I honestly love it, but I'm getting really hot. So I'm going to take this off. Two more finished objects, very short and um, shortly. And then I'll go on to my works in progress because this is already so long. Sorry. First one is so cute. No, I'll do that one last. Play this one first so I can wear something. This is the Edgar Pullover, or no, yeah, Edgar Pullover? Oh, yeah, because that's German. Um, like, slipover, I guess would be the word, right? Um, I would just say uh, vest. <laughs> The like knit vest, oh, it's so cute. And it has like these, like this rib on the side. It's by, it's a design by uh, Johanna um, from Colibri by Johanna on Instagram. Colibri by Johanna, right? Colibri means hummingbird um, in German. She's a German designer. All of her designs are awesome. And they're, they have them in, she has them in English too, I think. I think. Maybe the one I got is in English. 
might be in German, but definitely worth checking out. She has beautiful designs. Uh, oh, I want to knit this one by her. It's called the Raoul, and it's it's like a almost like a mock neck, and then just like these zigzag doodads, but like all monochrome. It's really cool. So that's on my list. I got that one too. So, but this is <laughs> this is the Edgar. Okay, the Edgar vest, and it has like this ribbing that goes all the way down the sides. It's so gorgeous. And the one that she had online is all one color, but I did stripes with uh, Zakami yarn. So Zakami is a um, hand dyer that uh, from Edinburgh. If I remember, yeah, Edinburgh. And I decided to do this kind of as like a spring um, Scottish spring make along. Um, I'm not Scottish, but I just, I love Scotland and I just, oh, just so gorgeous. And Zakami has the most beautiful yarn. It's so gorgeous and soft. And this, I was working with Superwash Merino here and I just lo love the way it looks. I did get a little bit of pooling. I did not do helical knitting. I'm sorry, but like everywhere else, like I'm going to show you something else I did with the rest. Um, this is the only pooling I got. It's beautiful. I wish, it, like, this does not do it justice. It's gorgeous. And then both of them are from, from Sakami's. Uh, no, one's super wash and one's non super wash. Let me see. They have, like, really cute names. The green is called Scented Portrait. And the other one is Ex Exordium. Yeah, the Exordium is this one. And this one's Scented Portrait. So, oh, just so soft. I could wear nothing underneath this. I, I have. I've worn around my house just in this. Just awesome. And the pattern, amazing. I would net 10 of these, but I don't need 10 of them. I just need this one because it's so cute. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And then with my little leftovers... Is this not the cutest little thing? I do not have any children. I have a cat um, that I brought with me from America. Um, but <laughs> I'm like looking at her. <laughs> uh, but this is for my niece. So this is also the Exordium and the Scented Portrait from Sakami, Sakami Yarns. They're both, this is all DK weight. And then I used the rest, or like a little bit of my uh, alpaca, brushed alpaca silk by Drops. And the red, there's like a red in there, that's Drops Daisy. I used um, the Drops Daisy just to test it out um, on a scarf that I gifted. Um, yeah, and it says... Intuitive Nets. Got those on Etsy. Don't remember where. <laughs> but this all was really fun. Um, so yeah. Really cute. I ran I ran out of the scented portrait and I just happened to have a yarn that looks really similar, but it's a cotton blend. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell. So can you? Can you tell? It's just like the last last row. Anyway, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I kind of wish mine had little fuzzy mohair bits, or not mohair, silk alpaca, but oh, I think it's like one of my favorites, it's just so small, she would hate to hear me say it's small because she wants to be like a big, um, she genderifies herself as a girl, so um, <laughs> like a big girl, but um, yeah. Whips. First whip. I'm going to show you my crochet thing. Doesn't look like much right now. This is a baby blanket. You probably recognize this is the rest of my yarn. And it's actually really cute crocheted, but it's just, I imagine like the whole crocheted object just being in that one yarn, it wouldn't have looked good. It would have been, it's just not what I imagined actually in the end for that garment. Need something more stripe like with definition and stuff so 
I have all of my squares done. And basically this is like half. And then if you can imagine, <laughs> like behind here, if you can imagine like, I'm gonna do pink along the side one row. And then I'm gonna do like a little ruffly, if I can, if I have enough yarn to do ruffly edge of the yellow again. So it'll be like pink and then yellow. My boyfriend's sister is having her second child and it's a girl. So yeah, so that's that. And oh, um, the pink, I didn't say what it was. The pink is, I have a lot of drops going on right now. I'm just like stash busting a lot of like my, like I said, my old um, yarns, like the new schemes that I like brought in, um, especially when I first started knitting, like I was like, oh, I love that and this and that one, try that out. Of course, who wasn't? And so I, I got a bunch of different stuff and I really do enjoy drops. Um, but I wanted to try to be a little bit more mindful of like where and how much and stuff that I'm, what I'm consuming. So this is Drops Andes. It's a very nice, like I think it's wool and alpaca blend. Um, it's very, it's a chunkier yarn. So you can see, I would say it's like a chunky or bulky. I don't know if it would be bulky. I think it would just be chunky. Definitely definitely thicker than an Aaron. So, um, yeah. And then the other one is at DK. Um, yeah. My next whip. I'm a pretty monogamous knitter. Knitter. I'm a monogamous metamorphs <laughs> knitter, <laughs> which means I usually have one to two, maybe three, very rarely four whips at a time. I can't, like, I, I can't focus on, like, a bunch of things at once, but I also don't like to get, like, bored with things and just, like, try to get it done to get it done. Um, so I like, like, two whips is kind of my favorite because, like, if I'm not into the one that day, then I'll do the other one and they get done really fast. So, yeah, like, I mean, most nights I knit and like in the mornings, I always try to knit for like, depends on if I work that day or not. If I work that day, then maybe I'll get like with my breakfast, like 15 minutes, <laughs> I'm lucky. And then if I'm not working that day, um, then I'll like try to sit for like a half an hour to, an it would be nice to have like, or like an hour if I'm, if I'm like lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say like, yeah, most, most days is between 30 to 45 minutes. I'm not like going to work that day. Um, but yeah, in the morning and then at the, at night, like I tend to knit when we watch like TV or something like almost every night <laughs> or like, yeah. And then I read like right before I go to bed. So yeah, I get some stuff done, but Right now I have a lot of whips, in my opinion. I have, oh, I think I have four. So that is the blanket. I don't really count that because it's kind of like, I'm doing that because of this like event, <laughs> event <laughs> that's gonna happen. They're gonna be born near my birthday. So like, I definitely wanna have that like squared away and finished. Um, so yeah, so the blanket and it's going really fast. I'm having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Haven't crocheted in a while. So it's been good fun. Um, my second whip is drops kids silk. And I think the color sage, this is probably one of the yarns I've had in my stash the longest. I think I purchased this in like 2021 at some point maybe 2022, maybe it's 2024. I've had it in there a while because I got it for, to like compliment this other, yarn. I was so naive. I got this beautiful one ball of, I think it's mohair as well, mohair in Italy when I was traveling with my boyfriend. 
and I was like, I love this. I cannot find it anywhere. I need to match it so I can make a sweater. I think I wanted to make the novice cardigan by Patina. Um, and then so I purchased this. It is not the same color. Whoa, no way. It's not the same color as this completely other yarn that you purchased. <laughs> like, obviously. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was very naive. And I just went like all in. <laughs> like, fill up that cart with mohair, please. And this came in, and I love it, but it's just, it didn't match, like, the other <laughs> singular scheme that I had purchased in Italy. Um, which I have since, like, it's still in my stash, because I just think it's so precious. But, um, I found somewhere that sells it online. But now I'm like, oh, I need to find the perfect, the perfect, um, pattern to go with it. Because, I don't know why, I just, like, love it so much. I'll show you that one, I'll show you that one at some point. It's still tucked away in my stash. You'll look forward to that. Um, or I will look forward to showing you that now that I've said it, but yeah. So this is Drops Kid Silk Mohair. Um, <clears throat> I like it. It's fine. It's cute. It's so soft. I, it's like a, uh, I, as you can tell, I don't get agitated at all by mohair. Um, I love mohair. I'm a big mohair girly. Oh, just look at that fluff. So I'm holding it three strands of the Kids Hulk mohair. And I'm making a knockoff. I'm so sorry, Patina. I'm making a knockoff cloud, cardi uh, cloud sweater. Because I don't like drop shoulder, I saw the cloud sweater. And I was like, that is so pretty. You know what would be cool? That in mohair, but a raglan. So you can't tell. This is a raglan construction. I I think I might pick pick back up for the neck. So I cast on at the neck and then I used like raglan raglan increases along there. Just to do a bit of shaping, I also then do just like the front and the back. So just instead of all four. Um yeah. And then I split for sleeves. And now to make sure I have enough yarn, I'm doing the sleeves first. Um, which I think I'll be fine. And then I basically just leveled out some decreases in the arm. All right. I think I'm doing like every eleven rows, except the first one was at like fifteen, and then like every eleven rows. And then I did a little bit of rib and then I did a little stockinette and then I cast off with like a I didn't do a tubular cast off because it's not a rib so I just did like a that like where you yarn over like just you know you knit one and then you knit another one and then you pull the one from the back of the needle onto, over the front right so it looks like a chain I just did that loosely so that I would get like a little, like it's not really stretchy, but I didn't want it to be stretchy. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It's not, it's not the cloud sweater, but like this little detail and the bottom will have it too. It's kind of like Petite Knit's new cloud design. And I saw she's doing like a, a mohair blouse and I was like, hey, <laughs> very similar, similar brain waves there. I'm sure she thought of that way, way, way before I did, but <laughs> still. Yeah, this isn't really like rolling over as I want it to. So I think once, once I'm finished with the sleeves and the body, I'm like, or like almost done with the body maybe, I'm gonna like go back and maybe add. At least I need to go until I, like I can try it on truly. I don't have it on extra cables. I have, I just so happen to have, I'm using five millimeter needles. With three strands and just have those needles on that and my shorts over here so it's been working so far worked for the other sleeve I'm sure it will work for this one too and I just I'm having so much fun knitting this it's a lot of fun I hope it's gonna stay cold enough 
for me to wear this. Like, I'll just wear this. I don't get colds very often, so I could, but I do get warm. I could just wear this with like a scarf and I'd be happy and like a long sleeve underneath it and be fine. <laughs> okay, one more. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not a perfectionist. It's very rare that I will frog. It's almost in, like so rare that I will frog something back. Usually I just, I just keep going. I'm just like, I'm a fixer. I'll figure it out. Like maybe take a little bit back and then like fix something. But like frogging an entire object, especially if I knit a whole complete like object, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't frog this. <laughs> Even if the arms were like a little too small, I would just find someone with smaller arms. I mean, <laughs> or like if I didn't like the arms on this, I would have just frogged the arms back and worn it as a t-shirt. Like that's, that's more my vibe. I just because I just think of how many hours I spent on that. But on very rare occasion, the next two things I'll show you. One is like a languishing object that I will eventually get to. But um, every once in a while there is something that I'm like, what <laughs> am I gonna do? But just frog it. So this would fit me, okay? I am making a, <laughs> a baby, I'm making a child's sweater for another one of my nieces. She, this one is, we'll call her C. C is five, six. She's so small and she's so smart. She's like the smartest kid, I swear. I don't say that about all of my nieces and nephews, I swear. I should. I should say that about all my nieces and nephews, but they're all so smart. But she is like a genius, this kid. Insane. She's so cute and precious, and she loves pink. And I was like, I have some leftovers from this fuzzy monster right here. I'm going to make her a sweater. So this is the sweater. This would fit me. This will fit me. Look at this. I don't know what got into my head. I did decrease after the, the rib, okay? Might fall off these stitch markers, these stitch holders. Not my, not my smoothest moment here, but that, that's, that's big for a six-year-old. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, when I cast it down, I was like, that's not very, I think it was like 120 stitches. I need like 90. So this, uh, it's just getting frogged. I literally saved it to like show here because I just, this is probably the only moment I will probably ever frog something. It's very rare. The only other time I remember frogging something is I made my boyfriend like an Icelandic sweater with the wool that he brought back for me from Iceland. And that I, I had already made my, he brought like two sweaters, he's also like tall and thin, two sweaters quantity of yarn from Iceland. Uh, right? Like, good guy, um, knows what's up. <laughs> and so when he brought back the quantity of yarn, I was like, it's like, yeah, uh, she said it should be enough for, for a sweater. I was like, oh, okay. So I knit myself a sweater. <laughs> and then I was like, I think there's enough here for a second sweater. I made him a sweater out of that yarn, but I, it was like, it was yarn chicken. I think the, the collar, I used like a different yarn. It was the only thing. And like I had to, you know, play. I didn't do a full motif. I just like made it up as I went. Um, and like wrote it out like, okay, maybe some stripes, whatever. I just like every single scrap that I had at the end, I was like tying stuff together, but it worked. But when I first started the, the body, I had the same situation where it was just too wide, where I was like, if I keep going in this size, I will not have enough yarn. That's what's happening here. Like normally 
I would be like, well, maybe she'll wear it when she's nine. I think, you know, she's five or six right now. And maybe she'll wear it when she's like nine or 10. <laughs> you know, she'll grow into it. But this is just, no. I don't think I'll have enough yarn to make the whole thing if I, if I do it this way. So I do plan on making the arms, um, like the periwinkle color. I might decide that later. If I have enough to do the whole thing in pink, I might do the whole thing in pink. But I also kind of want to do like the arms in periwinkle and then the cuffs in, like the cuffs in pink and then the collar in periwinkle and then the sleeves in periwinkle and the body in pink. And I'm doing like little stripes, random, just random stripes. No, no pattern, just random. So yeah, there's that. My last whip. I tried them on recently or tried it on recently and I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't like, I don't know, like I, I thought they were going to, I will show you. It's a sock. I've never knit a sock before in my life. Okay. So this is like the only... <laughs> It's like my kryptonite, I guess. Like I, I'm a loose knitter, right? So it's, it's so hard. Look how thin those needles are. That is like a toothpick. It's like I'm knitting two toothpicks. They're so small. <laughs> and I, this is a 2.5. That's not that small, right? Please, like I could go down a size or two. But like, I don't want to knit with like a toothpick. No, ma'am. And I don't know. I've just have I've never I've always been a garment knitter, like a sweater knitter. Is my sweaters are my favorite. It's just like you spend so much time on on this. And I feel like sock knitters are always like, yeah, but it goes so fast once you know what you're doing. And I'm like, I just gotta like I don't love it. I don't know why. I don't love it. I think that'll change. I really I want this to be the year where I like finish this sock and I almost frogged it cause I was watching um Katie's podcast the knit witch um she's also uh, I don't know how many episodes she's on she's on quite a few but um she really encouraged me to like just watching like watching her knit so many socks because she knits a lot of socks to to progress with my sock knitting and like she does a lot of, she's done like a lot of rib socks on her Ravelry. I think she just recently released like a new pattern for like a, a better rib sock. Um, I think that's what it's called, the better rib sock um, by the Knit Witch on Ravelry. And this is not that. Um, this is like some random design that my friend was helping me uh, with. But I think she, the problem is that she, my friend, is a is a tight knitter. Like she's a normal to tight knitter. Like she's somewhere in the middle to tight, and I'm like somewhere in the middle to loose. Um, or maybe even not even in the middle. It's like I'm a loose lady, I guess. So <laughs> it is what it is. And this sock, it like has really pretty structure, but like what is that? Like if if the ankle, because like how. Does the rest of the sucks to be huge? I can't imagine it being smaller than this. Um, this is just ginormous, and I have very small feet, um, especially for how tall I am. I have like really short feet, and that doesn't matter, but they're also kind of narrow. And this just looks like a kinkle. I don't know why. <laughs> I just can't. And like when I put it on my leg, it's fine. It's like slouchy here and tight here, which is cool. And so I like turned it over, and that was cool. Like that, that was fine like this, but I don't love it. And I think that's why it's taking me so long. I love the design, it kept me interested. And I love the yarn, the yarn is denim mix. And this says my invite, which means mile long with aloe vera, la nicosa. Um, it's a 75% Virgin wool, 25% poly niche, 
squishy washable. It's good if you're knitting a sock. Um, yeah, and it says that I would need this whole thing for, for two socks, obviously. That's usually standard. Um, I love it. I don't know why. I'm not a big gray person, but it's really like soft. Probably that aloe vera. <laughs> um, but I just like enjoy it. I don't know why. I just enjoy the color. And it's kind of making those like this interesting neutral sock. But I, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna frog this and make Katie's Ritz socks or that I've already knit the cap for this. If I'm just gonna do it, you know, just, just knit the rest of this and then another one of these and then save Katie's design for like another sock set. Maybe I'll like get a really beautiful sock set. So I'm like encouraged. I did purchase like she uh, dyes yarn as well. I did purchase some like beautiful yarn from her in like a sock weight, but I want to make a tank top out of that. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah too pretty to put on my feet um but maybe I will find like a really pretty yarn to encourage me to make another sock but this has been like in here it's the most beautiful bag I was trying to motivate myself to like actually make them and bring them places it hasn't been working I need a different bag that will motivate me more <laughs> so yeah there's that those are all my whips I don't really count the sock as a whip anymore it's been in there for a year okay wow this is such a long episode i haven't even gotten to acquisitions okay i only have one thing i'm gonna put my sweater not that one i'm gonna put one of these sweaters back on probably the one i started with so that we have some cohesion here but oh it's so warm and it's so comfortable oh, perfection Perfection. Okay. I like to sing, so you might get a little snippet of that every once in a while. I'm really enjoying this. This is really fun. I I don't know if you're having as much fun as I am, but I'm having fun. So <laughs> yeah, I hope this is fun for you and not extremely boring. Um I this is also like my phone is so old. Um, so I hope you can see the yarn when I show it to you and how beautiful it is. This is uh, Hyacinth. The yarn is Hyacinth. That's the color way. Oh my gosh. I already balled it up like this week. But it's this beautiful olive. Like this looks more green. Like, no, maybe that, that's about right. Yeah. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So cool. This is from Oh my gosh. Hexen. Oh. I know it's not Hexen Strick. I'm going to look. Hang on. Okay. I got it. Got it. German hand dyer, okay? And um, her name is the Handarbeit Hexe, which just translate into like hand craft witch. Um, yeah, and this is a plant dyed sock yarn with 80% wool and 20% silk. And I ordered this from her off of her Instagram. She was having like a little story sale. I just fell in love with it. I cannot wait to knit with this. Um, I've been like saving it for the last couple months because I know I wanted to make a tank top. And I didn't know which tank top until the other week. And I'm gonna make this into the next to neckline tank or top. Next to neckline tank. 
I think that's right, by Wool and Beyond. Um, beautiful. It has like a Latvian braid at the neck. And then it's just a simple like tank structure, just square. And then it has a beautiful like braid here at the neck. And then some like almost garter stripes. And the alternating color I'm use is this Drops Flora in this little charcoal color. The color is five. <laughs> very, very descriptive. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of imagine. So this will be the main color and then little stripes in this. I'm just trying to stash bust this guy right here. I made my, like one of my best friends, a vest. I knit her a vest out of this and she made me a beautiful necklace as a crafty bee does. Uh, and this was what was left over basically. And I had knit my nephew, I do have nephews, not just nieces. Um, <laughs> I knit my nephew a hat out of this this winter. Um, and then I just, I have this. This is it. This is all that's left. And I just thought, perfect. It's gonna look so good. Cause they're definitely like, this needs to be broken up a little bit, I think. And I don't, I'm not gonna do helical knitting unless I have to. Um, but basically I don't even know how it's gonna work up because half of it, like when I had the skein out, like I wound it by hand, if that's not obvious. Um, <laughs> as I laid it out like into a circle, um, half of it was purple and half of it was green. And I'm not savvy enough yet to know what that's going to look like. So I am just dying to start this. It's not white. I mean, it's spring, but it's not spring. I didn't, I didn't wink to the wrong eye. Spring yet. Um, so not spring enough for me to wear this. Um, and I don't want to start another project without finishing one of the other ones. And I'm just going through a huge stash busting mode. And this is going to motivate me to get through that. So once I finish the blanket, um, and maybe, maybe, because I think the blanket is going to go pretty quick. <clears throat> once I finish the blanket, once I finish this, that will be next to my needles. Anything else? Anything else about like life? No, I don't think so. Because um, you don't really know me that well. So yet or maybe you feel like you do i hope you feel like you do that would be great um yeah because that's always my favorite when i feel like i know my like vodcasters <laughs> um but yeah let's see spring is sprung i'm right I, I love spring like the older i get the older i get the more i appreciate spring um the birds i, I love a good bird watch I think as soon as you hit 30 you're like all of a sudden like oh birds um so i really enjoy i'm enjoying that i'm hearing all the birds coming out there's like a lot of nature kind of around ish i live in the city but like there are a lot of trees and there's like a park nearby ish so i tend to hear a lot of birds chirp chirp chirping away and that's been nice <sighs> i'm at heart a fall person like a lot of people are fall people, especially knitters. We're, we're fall folk, right? But I've learned to appreciate spring so much. Uh, all right, my battery's gonna die and I'm probably running out of storage. So yeah, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I hope wherever you are, you are well. I love when the botanical knitter says that. I think it's so true. I just, I really, I hope you're doing all right. And I hope you're having a great day. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.